We all know Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Unless you think this guy or this guy is. But no matter where you stand in the GOAT debate, I think we can all agree the Air Jordan line is the greatest line of basketball sneakers the world has ever seen. And I've decided to rank the 10 best. But MJ did play in 14 Jordans during his run with the Bulls, which means there's four Jordans that won't make the top 10 list. And today, we're going to talk about those. These are the worst Air Jordans. All right, so before we get started, I got to remind you guys that this is part one of a three-part series where I basically take Jordans 1 through 14 and I rank them from worst to best. So once you guys are done here, definitely go check out those other two videos. You guys are YouTube experts. You know where to click and all that jazz. But like I said, today's episode is all about the worst of the worst. And I want to start by talking about the Air Jordan 2 because these are the Jordans that I think are loved the least. Now, personally, I actually really like the Jordan 2s. When I unboxed these from downstairs and I took them out of storage, I was like, damn, man, the Jordan 2 is actually pretty nice. But you have to understand something. Back when these first dropped in 1987, there wasn't a whole lot of hype around the Jordan 2s because remember, Jordan spent most of that season injured. And when he came back, he actually didn't wear the 2s very often. He actually wore this sneaker right here, this is a hybrid between the Jordan 1s and the Jordan 2s because the upper is the exact same as the first Jordans, but the midsole as well as the outsole is identical to the Jordan 2s. And I think this is because Jordan had just come off of a foot injury and he wanted more impact protection. But whatever the reason may be, it didn't even seem like Jordan was that hyped about the 2s as well. So you can understand why their popularity just kind of took a little bit of a hit. In fact, the designer of the Jordan 2s, Peter Moore, was fired by Nike after putting out this shoe. And that's when Tinker Hatfield took over the Air Jordan line. And Peter Moore actually tried to convince Jordan to leave Nike with him. But Jordan kind of looked at him and was like, nah, I think I'm good here. I think it's safe to say that he made the right choice. Now, despite the 2s misfire to connect with the mainstream like its predecessor did, it's still an iconic sneaker. It was the first sneaker Nike ever put out without their iconic swoosh logo, which when you think about it, is pretty crazy because back in 87, Nike was still kind of an up and coming company. And to put out a product that is endorsed by your star athlete without your logo is pretty crazy. But Nike did hedge a little bit by putting a small Nike tab on the back of the heel. But still, even then, it's pretty crazy to think that Nike would put out something without their logo. And what's also crazy is Nike originally dropped the Jordan 2s with premium Italian leather, which increased the price to $100. And this was a huge part of the marketing campaign. However, that's a $35 increase from its predecessor, the Jordan 1, which only ran for $65. So the Jordan 2s were more expensive, not as appealing. Jordan didn't really seem to want to play in them. And the retro treatment for the twos haven't been that great at all with one, maybe two colorways worth adding to your collection. So that's why I think the Jordan twos are the worst or least best Jordan of all time. But like I said, I still like them. I would love to hear what you guys think about them in the comment section below. But at the end of the day, someone's got to be at the bottom. And I'm sorry, Jordan twos, but you're just not one of the best. All right, next up, as one of the worst Air Jordans ever, we have the Air Jordan 9s. Now, the 9s get a bad beat because MJ unexpectedly retired before the start of the 93-94 season. So we never did get to see MJ in the 9s on the court. We all know during his first retirement that Jordan pursued a career in baseball and he did so with a modified version of the nines that basically turned them into baseball cleats. So while Jordan did technically wear these, and remember, that's a huge factor in how popular a shoe can get, to me it didn't really count because having Jordan wear these while playing anything other than basketball, I don't know, it just felt weird. It just hit different and it also didn't allow Jordan to have an iconic moment with the nines like he's had in pretty much every other Air Jordan. But despite Jordan's absence from the game of basketball and the NBA, 
Nike still went full steam ahead with the knives by placing Jordan in them during the movie Space Jam and also in the center of a pretty funny ad campaign that used Jordan's retirement to their advantage. The only person who could have made that move was Michael Jordan. Conclusion, Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time, is letting nothing stand in the way of what he loves to do. And that's just play basketball. But look, no matter how hard Nike tried to sell these, it really didn't matter because MJ just wasn't hooping anymore. And even if he did, I just feel like the Nines don't have that many distinct visual features that help them stand out amongst the other Air Jordans. They got a plain looking upper, the molded midsole design just really doesn't do it for me. And the outsole has also got a very weird pattern. But at the end of the day, these just look like a baseball shoe, which is fine. I mean, that was the inspiration behind the design. That's what Tinker was going for. But there's a reason why baseball shoes aren't as popular as basketball shoes. So to me, the nines are just a rather stale entry in the Air Jordan line. However, Jordan brand has given these a pretty nice retro treatment with a few great colorways, including the Dornbeckers, the Bin 23s, as well as the Kilroy pack that again, used the excellent ad campaign to their advantage. And high school LeBron rocked these for a while too, which was pretty major. Oh, and the statue outside the United Center has MJ wearing the nines. So I guess that's their iconic moment. But if the most iconic moment the nines have to offer is being on the statue of Michael Jordan, I think it's safe to say that these are definitely not one of the more iconic Air Jordans ever. So that's why I have them on the outside of the top 10. All right, next up, we actually have the successor to the Jordan 9s, the Air Jordan 10s. Now, these are one of the more forgotten Jordans in time because technically, it's a great shoe. I mean, the visuals are clean, the performance was spot on, and MJ even had an iconic moment in these with this 55-point performance against the Knicks in MSG. But again, he only played half a season in these. And when you compare them to the 13 other Jordans that he played in, it just didn't really make that much of an impact. The Air Jordan 10 dropped while Jordan was still playing baseball and Nike decided to design the 10s as a tribute to MJ's illustrious career with a list of his accomplishments on the outsole. So instead of feeling like a brand new Air Jordan sneaker, the 10s felt more like a trophy piece that was a celebration of everything the Air Jordan line had achieved in MJ's career. Because remember, we didn't know Jordan was coming back out of retirement. For all we knew, he was retired for good. So the 10s, I mean, they just hit different. It kind of felt like the first Kobe AD sneaker, which was still a Kobe Bryant sneaker, but it also kind of wasn't because he was retired and Kobe wasn't going to wear them anymore. That's kind of how everybody felt when the 10s first dropped in 95. Now, as we all know, MJ did eventually come back to the league and just five games in, he dropped 55 points in the 10s in the Mecca of basketball, but that was during the regular season. Jordan actually did not have an iconic moment in the 10s in the postseason. In fact, he actually decided to wear the successor to the 10s, the 11s, early in the playoffs without Nike's permission, which the NBA actually fined him for because it was too white to wear on the road. I know, it's a weird rule, but my point is, the 10s just had really weird timing, and that's why I don't think they're one of the 10 best Jordans of all time, even though Nike did drop some great colorways back in 95 with the OG City Pack, and Jordan brand has kept the 10 active in the retro scene with some great colorways and also with some not great colorways as well. All right, so last but not least, we have the Air Jordan 8. Now, as you can see, I actually don't own a pair of eights, which is perfect because even though I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan and I collect sneakers, I could just never justify spending my money on a pair of eights. For whatever reason, I just don't like the eights at all. They're no doubt a unique looking sneaker with their two crossover strap design that is distinctive visually, but in a way, it kind of hurt the eights off court appeal as the straps provided a tight fit, which is great for on the court, but a little uncomfortable off of it. Now that didn't really seem to bother Jordan as he wore the eights while completing his first championship three-peat, all while averaging an insane 41 points per game against the Suns in the playoffs. Sorry, Chuck, but even you understand. Hey Mike, I got my own shoe. My own initials on it. Now originally, Nike did drop some great colorways of the eights, like the aquas and the black and red playoffs. But at the end of the day, the eights just never really caught on like the other Air Jordans did. And to me, they always kind of felt like the odd man out in the line because that two strap crossover design 
It reminds me more of a Hirachi sneaker than it does a classic Air Jordan. Now, Jordan Brand did pump some life back into the eights years after Jordan's second retirement by providing player exclusive colorways to some of the league's most popular athletes, such as Ray Allen, Quinn Richardson, and even Kobe Bryant. But the retro releases for the eights have been a little rough, with all the OG colorways making a return, but with the new colorways failing to capture the imagination of the sneaker community. And then there was that awful 8.0 release, which tried to update the eights with some modern tech but kind of bastardized the OG colorways, which gave them a cheap feel that fast-tracked them straight to sale racks pretty much everywhere they went. Look, at the end of the day, the Air Jordan 8 was just kind of there. Eventually one day, I will pick up a pair for myself, but it won't be because I like how they look or because I really want them. It'll be because I want to complete a collection to complete my Air Jordan line. Other than that, my interest in the Air Jordan 8 is pretty low but that's just my opinion i think these are one of the worst air jordans mj ever wore as a chicago bull alongside the nines the tens as well as the two but let me know what you think the worst air jordan is in the comment section below and if you like this video drop it a like it really helps me out and don't forget to subscribe and join the jaron mob for more sneaker related content just like this my name is jaron is we're gonna have you i'll catch you guys in the next one peace